Hey everybody, welcome to displaying raster data. If you're in my class, I really urge you to take notes on this video just as you would any kind of classroom lecture, especially taking note of key vocabulary words often showing up in bold. So this video has three parts. First, what is raster data? Second, what is a multiband raster? And third, how do we display multiband rasters using RGB color, usually as a true or a false color image. So a raster is an image composed of square pixels of constant size, usually. And each of those pixels has a numeric value called a digital number. So here you see all the square pixels, each with its own number. These numbers can represent any kind of data and they can be visualized as any color. So in this example, we have these pixels here, each has a number, and we can, we can, put, we can make them light or dark depending on the value of the number, which then gives them white or black color, and then when we render them all, we see an image from that. So again, we use raster data for continuous data sets because we usually wanna have a, a data value at every point in our map. So what kinds of data can we store? We can store any kind of continuous data. But here's a couple popular examples. How about digital elevation data? So each pixel is going to have the elevation of the land surface, either in meters or feet. And so when you look at the raster as a whole, you see a map of land surface elevation. There's a name for that. It's called a digital elevation model, or a DEM. Here's another example. How about climate data? It's a, we know that it rains everywhere at some point. So, so climate or precipitation is a perfect uh, continuous variable. We need to have it represented everywhere. And if we color the amount of precipitation, uh, high precipitation is blue, low precipitation is yellow we end up with a beautiful map of wet versus dry areas in the Western United States. So a couple of things to know about rasters. And a lot of these you know already. One is the idea of spatial resolution. So spatial resolution depends on the size of the pixels and the density of the pixels. Essentially, if you have an image that is made up of more pixels, then you're going to see more detail in that image than if you had less pixels. So here's a photograph of a dog made from 1600 pixels. That's high resolution. We see the dog very well. Same picture comprised of only 12 pixels per row. And we see very low resolution. We can hardly tell that it's a dog. So you know about this from your time with your digital camera. But the same thing applies to digital topography or any kind of spatial data. Usually higher resolution is better, except it makes our file sizes very, very large, sometimes unwieldy. So along those lines, a typical raster in remote sensing contains millions of pixels. So here is a map of a reservoir in the western U.S. Look at all the detail you can see. Uh, literally, this pixel, this map or image contains 218,700 pixels, right? That's how many it takes to show all this detail. And interestingly, each of those pixels has a digital number. We know that. And we can view those digital numbers often as a histogram. So here they are. Uh, some a lot of the pixels are black. They might have a value of zero. And then the white pixels over here might have a value of 256. And then we can see how those pixel values or digital numbers are spread and distributed using this histogram. So notice in this image, we have zero to 256. Um, we have, and really that's, we have 256 possible digital numbers. And the reason for that is that this is 8-bit data. And this is a really important point. The 
the number of digital numbers that you can have depends on how your data is stored. So a common format for eight for raster data is an 8-bit format. So that means that each digital number is going to be encoded by a sequence of eight ones or zeros, where a bit is either a one or a zero. So for example, the number 248 might be encoded in your computer by 10011011, so by eight different bits. So now, because 8-bit data gives you 256 possible combinations of zeros and ones, that's how many specific numbers we can actually store. Uh, and if you have 16-bit data or 32-bit data, that those numbers become much larger. So how do we display rasters? We've already talked about this a little bit. Um, but essentially, what we do is we take one of those digital numbers and we assign it to uh, some kind of brightness level. So if we only have one raster as our input, we'll often call this a grayscale image. And we'll often assign high numbers to be bright and low numbers, like 28, to be dark. And those shades of gray that eventually define an image. So when we say the word single band or grayscale image, what we really mean is that we are, we are adding tone to a single raster layer, OK? Um, and here we just see another example of that. Here's the digital numbers. Each one corresponds to a shade or tone of gray. And when we display that, we see a face. But importantly, a single band or grayscale image can also be shaded in their tones of other colors. It could be tones of blue, tones of red. So it doesn't have to just be, be gray. Okay, so let's move on now to multi-band rasters. So multi-band rasters are a single file that contain multiple rasters covering the same area. So the, the most common example of this is an image or a photograph that's collected. It covers the exact same area of the ground, but each separate raster or band is collected in a different wavelength of light. Okay, And that's actually where the name band comes from. Band is short for bandwidth, which refers to a a wavelength interval of light. So in this example, here is four uh, rasters that are covering the exact same footprint of ground. They have the exact same number of pixels, same sized pixels, but they're each storing different data within the pixels. The one on top is storing information about uh, light that came in in the blue wavelength. This one's showing light that came in in the green wavelength, red wavelength, and infrared wavelength, right? So we took one picture in four different wavelengths, and we stored the, that into four different rasters that usually come packaged into a single file. And we're going to call each of these rasters now a band, OK? So we're going to use the word band. So if we have a multi-band raster, we can then use what's called RGB color to display uh, the image. And here's how that might work. So in RGB color, we're going to take three bands, and we're going to assign one to red, one to green, and one to blue. And then we're going to mix those to give a specific color. If we assign uh, pixels that were collected in blue to have a color of blue, and pixels collected in the red wavelengths to have a color of red, and green wavelengths to have a display color of green, 
then we get what's called a true color image, okay? Blue was assigned to blue, green to green, and red to red. However, we don't have to do that. We can also assign the, the band that was collected in the blue wavelength, and we can make that orange. We can take the band collected in the green wavelength of light and assign that to purple. And that would give us what's called a false color image, okay? So again, sticking with this example, if we take the blue, the green, and the red bands, and we assign them display colors that match blue, green, and red, then we end up with what's called a natural color or a true color image, where when you see this, the black pavement looks black, the green grass looks green. But if we assign those to different colors, for example, imagine we take this infrared band and assign it to be the color red, and we leave the red band out of it altogether, then we'll get uh, an image where the grass looks red. So if you're having trouble visualizing how these RGB colors mix, here's a, a visual example of that. So we start out with N members of red, green, or blue, R, G, and B. And depending the, the amounts that you combine them in, you can make any other color. So here we've combined red and blue to make purple, red and green to make yellow, or blue and green to make, I guess we'll call it cyan. And of course, if you combine all the colors together, you make white, right? That is all colors combined. And the absence of color is black. The absence of light is black. So computationally, how does this actually work? It turns out that we can add red, green, and blue in fractions to ultimately define any color that we want. And we can kind of see that here on this color cube. So if we define, um, for example, one-fifth red, three-fifths green, and four-fifths blue, right? That takes us one-fifth along the red axis, takes us three-fifths up the green axis, and four-fifths along the blue axis. And when you mix those in those proportions, it would define this kind of bluish color. And that makes sense, because we, we had kind of four-fifths or 80% blue uh, so that's how we actually dial up any, any, any specific color as a mixture of the red, green, blue, and members. And so what the computer does in practice, it takes a multi-band image, it picks out a, a given pixel in that image, um, and it computes uh, a fractional pixel value so what that means is that imagine the digital number is 127, right? And we talked about how the digital number could range from 0 to 255. Well, 127 divided by 255 is 0.5. So that value of 127 literally is halfway between 0 and 255. It's half of the maximum that it could have been. So let's say that we were going to then use this number to add blue into our RG mix RGB mixture. The blue input value would then be a fraction of zero, would be 0 0.5, right? And if that pixel had, for example, had a value of 255, then we'd be adding a blue fractional value of 1 to generate those colors. And we'll be learning a lot more about this as we get into lab and start applying some of these ideas. So in summary, uh, rasters are continuous data sets that have a, a pixel value for each spatial location. Um, those values are called digital numbers. Um, the range of digital numbers is determined by the structure of the data file. For example, if we store eight bits of information, um, that gives us a 256 possible numbers, ranging from 0 to 255. But we can also have multi-band rasters, 
where we have multiple grids of pixels that overlay perfectly. The best example of this would be different versions of the same photograph taken in different wavelengths of light. We can then color those multiband rasters into a single image where each pixel gets some unique color using an RGB color scheme that combines numbers from three rasters to create a single display color. And we just talked about how those would actually be fractional numbers. If we assign red, green, and blue display colors to the actual red, green, and blue bands from which those values came, that would give us a true color image. But if we pick random colors that don't correspond to the wavelength in which the band was collected, then we get a false color image. Thanks so much for listening. Look forward to hearing your questions about this.